Hey everybody, it's Jeff Challen. Um, so in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about what to do with the stack trace. Um, so, you know, this is probably gonna to happen to you if it hasn't already. You're just working along, everything's going fine. In this case, I'm, I'm just working on MP0. Um, and I run the test suites and all of a sudden something's going wrong. Um, and in this case, what I'm gonna see here is uh, the test suites are gonna fail and they're gonna fail by throwing an exception. And when you, you notice something in the output for Android Studio, I'll point this out in a minute, once it gets done actually running the test suites, um, there's, uh, when you run tests in Android Studio, how they fail can depend on what actually happened, right? So there's one type of failure that will show up as sort of like orange or yellow, I guess, maybe. Um, and that indicates that there was a failure in the test suite, like something, you know, your app behaved differently than we expected. But when you see this type of thing, this indicates that your app crashed. Like something actually went wrong to the point that if you were running the app on your phone, you would see this dialogue about, you know, the app is stopped. And, you know, of course, when I ever see that with an app, the next thing I do, uninstall, right? Because it's like, eh, you know, I mean, and, and, you know, when you deploy things for real in the future, you create things to try to get people to use them. Crashiness is typically not appreciated by your users. They'll probably go try to find something else. So anyway, this is not good. And if I click on this, you'll see that I see this big wall of text. Now, this is intimidating, and I get it, but this is like, you know, the, the proverbial needle in the haystack, although it's not really that big of a haystack, and the needles are kind of obvious, but this is an incredibly valuable piece of information. So, so what is this, first of all? I want to talk a little bit about what a stack trace is. A stack trace represents uh, a point at the, in your program where something went wrong. Um, in this case, at the very top, you'll see that it says that this was a null pointer exception. So we probably remember these from previously when we were working on homework problems and other things. In Java, when I try to use a null reference and dereference it using dot notation or in other ways, this is what happens. And this will cause your app to crash. Now, what's down here is how we got here. So this will tell me exactly where the null pointer exception happened. And then there's a series, this is called the stack, which is essentially a series of method calls and this is in reverse order. So this is where the null pointer exception actually happened. There were a few calls that were made inside the scanner class. And then one of the things you'll notice here, and, and uh, Android Studio is helping me. So when you, these are all clickable, and I can click on any of these, right? And, and I could probably uh, get this to open if I wanted to. The ones that are grayed out are in code that is not part of our project. This is in a library that we're using. This is essentially in the Java standard library, essentially. So we triggered a null pointer exception in the, a null pointer exception in the Java standard library. Now, when that happens, you know, the problem is probably not in the Java standard library. The problem is in our code. So what we want to understand is how did we get there? What did we do that caused this to happen? Right? So, you know, please don't go file a bug at this point and say, you know, to the Java maintainers, hey, there's something wrong with java.util.objects. And be like, no, there isn't. You know, millions of people use that and it works fine. What's happening is we use it wrong. And so what we do is we read down the stack trace. So essentially, the stuff down here the, at the very bottom of the stack trace, these are calls that were made in the testing harness. And this stuff you can pretty much ignore. So all of this stuff down here that's all grayed out, this we're not that worried about. This is, these are uh, these are method calls made by the framework that's testing our app. But what and, and the calls at the very top sometimes are in libraries that we don't care about. So it's really the stuff in the middle. And and let's see how to do this. These are all clickable, right? And so this will give us the exact series of method calls that led us to the place where the failure happened. So let's 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 do this. Let me pull this down a little bit. So. Uh, I have more room to look at what's about to happen here. Okay, so I'm going to click on this. These are clickable. They're blue because they're clickable and they're part of my project. So what happened here? So I was in on create. This is what gets called early on when I'm starting up the app as part of testing. The on create method in the eatable application class runs and it starts the server. So you'll see it here I'm calling server.start. So at that point I jump in to this piece of code and this was the next place where I made a call. Now I'm actually creating a server instance and as part of the private constructor for the server class, and this is code that you know we gave you and, and works fine, uh, you're not expected to understand, but this is sort of how we got here. This is the trace. 
now ended up in this load restaurants method. So let me click on this. So this is now the place where I made the call to the scanner class. You'll see I'm creating a scanner right here. And so scanner, and if I continue to click on this, there's more code that somebody wrote, not me, not you, but someone who you know works for Oracle maybe, or worked, used to work for Sun Microsystems back when they were in charge of Java, wrote this code to, uh, to process text, essentially. That's what scanner does. Scanner, just between the two of us, scanner is one of the worst designed parts of Java. Like, it's terrible. So anyway, we use it here because we have to. It works, but uh, not, not, not a particularly well-designed part of Java. There are some great parts of Java that are very well-designed. Scanner is not one of them. Um, anyway, so we're creating a scanner here, and somehow the process of creating a scanner failed. Now, typically at this point, what you do is you say, okay, something wrong happened on this line. Now, sometimes, particularly when you have a null pointer exception, there's a variable that was null and you can see where you were dereferencing it and you're like, okay, now I know that variable is null. Was it supposed to be null? I clearly wasn't expecting it to be null. Now I gotta figure out why it's null and I can go back and use the techniques we talked about last time, like adding print statements um, and things like that, right? But in this case, it's a little weird because I'm creating a new scanner and the null pointer exception was in the scanner class. And, but typically there's a problem on this line. There's a problem on the last line of your code before whatever other part of the stack trace led to the exception. And if I look at this carefully, what you might have already seen when I started this is that I just misspelled the name of the file, right? The file is named restaurants.csv. It's not named restaurants.csv. I just, you know, fat finger. And this can happen, like sometimes, you know, when I'm working, my cat like rolls over on the keyboard and just starts pressing buttons. And so sometimes like a stray character just wanders into your, one of your files. Um, so anyway, no reason to panic, right? The stack trace is super, super useful for understanding what is happening. And particularly when you have no pointer exceptions, you know, we have people that will come for help on the forum or on the help site. They say, oh, there's no pointer exception. I have no idea what happened. It's like, yes, you do. You have a stack trace. The stack trace will tell you exactly where the null pointer is. Now, let me, uh, l let me try to do a little bit of a, a, a sillier example here, right? So let's do object uh, test is equal to null. I'm just gonna show you what this looks like when I actually have a null pointer exception on the line, right? And so now I'll do system.out.println test uh, hash code. Um, and so now let's run this. Hopefully it's warning me that this is, <laughs> yeah. So Android Studios, you know, at this point is smarter than Java because Java will allow me to do this, but Android Studio knows there's a big problem right here, right? And you can see over here on the, on the right, we talked about this a little bit last time, these, you know, warnings in the margin are super, super useful, right? So this is essentially telling me, no, don't do this, terrible idea. Like this is going to produce an all pointer exception, but that's what I'm trying to do here. So let's just run this again. Um, and in fact, let me just run this test again. I'll just run the, because they're, they're all gonna fail in the same way. So this is what happens when there's actually a null pointer exception on the line. What you'll see is rather than in the previous case, my stack trace went through my code, but then into the scanner library. In this case, the stack trace is just gonna stop right on my line of code. Like the top line where the null pointer exception is actually generated will be line 111 in this file, uh, because that's where I am you know, uh, explicitly taking a null reference and trying to dereference it. Right. Uh, okay. There we go. So now up here, you see a similar stack trace to what we had before. Um, you know, the, the, the way we got here is the same, right? I started on create, I called server.start, uh, server.start created a new server. Then I ended up in the constructor and that's how I got to this line of load restaurants. But now the problem is right here. So this is null pointer exception. And you know, that's, so that's what the problem is. And whenever I have a null pointer exception, and this can be hard for, to, for you to understand, right? Because sometimes it'd be like, what's null? I don't understand. But that's where, you know, now you have an additional piece of information about the problem, which is that something on that line is null. Something that you are dereferencing, something that you were using dot notation on is null. And in this case, of course, I know what it is because this test and I created a null uh, problem just so that we could see how to do that. All right, so these, these stack traces, you know, and, and this is something that is not limited to Java. C++ has stack traces, C has stack traces, Go has stack traces, JavaScript has stack traces, Python has stack traces. These are something that you will work with for the rest of your career as a software creator. I, I deal with them all the time, 
Um, and so, you know, you just get to the point where, you, you, you know, rather than it's like, you know, that line from the Matrix. It's like, I don't see I don't see the code. I just see what's going on. You just look at it and your kind of eyes gravitate right towards the part where you can see, OK, there's the parts that are from my code. And and I see some of those lines are called it differently. And Android Studio is helping me here. And, and really, typically, the most important thing is just right at the top. Right. Where did something go wrong? Because that's the line to zoom in on initially and try to understand what happened. Right. You also want to look at the exception itself, try to figure out what generated it. You know, in this case, it's a no pointer exception. In other cases, it can be other things. I could have an array index out of bounds exception or something like that. Um, all right. So our first piece of uh, new testing and debugging guidance, how to read stack traces and use them to find problems.